How to make great friends. Check out those tips if you're looking to build new friendships and maintain them for a long time. Friends come and go, don't they? We learned this somewhat early in life. When the kid next door moves, joins another clique, or gets into a fight with you, hopefully not. This trend continues as we transition into college and or join the working ranks. But there are simple, smart ways you can meet people, start a conversation, and cultivate healthy connections that will improve your life and theirs. Find out how. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as marvelous as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or a tea or vodka. And let's roll. I'm just extremely happy today because we're talking about a very positive topic. Friendship, how to make friendship, how to cultivate lifelong relationships. Now, why are friends so important? This might seem a very logical or simple question, but it's not. Our society tends to place an emphasis on romantic relationships, so we think that just finding the right person will make us happy and fulfilled. But extensive research has shown that friends are actually even more important to our psychological welfare, to our physiological well-being. Friends bring more happiness into our lives than virtually anything else. Remember, we are as humans social animals so we need to socialize but you want to socialize with the right people you want to think about quality not quantity you want to think about the right relationships fulfilling relationships you want to have the kind of friendships and partnerships that can boost you as a person and boost you in all aspects of your life friendships believe it or not have a huge impact on your mental health and happiness good friends good times good friends again good friends relieve stress they can provide comfort and joy. And most important, they can help you prevent loneliness and isolation. So you want to start thinking about developing again here when it, when it comes to friendship, you want to focus on quality, not quantity. Developing close friendships can also have a powerful impact on your physical health. So if you have lack of social connection, this may pose as much of a risk as smoking, drinking too much or leading a, sedent a sedentary lifestyle. The, the thing is that research has also shown that friendships can help you extend your um, your lifespan. So friends are even tied to longevity. And we actually have read a one, Swedish, one Swedish study that found that along with physical activity, maintaining a rich network of friends can add significant years to your life. But close friendships don't just happen. A lot of us, millions of us, struggle to meet people and develop quality connections. Again, quality, not quantity. So whatever your age or circumstances, it's never too late to make new friends, reconnect with old ones, and greatly improve your social your social life, emotional health, and overall well-being. I want to talk to you now about the benefits of friendships. So when you, why are we talking about this? Because to make great friends, I need to show you the return the roi if you will to use an investment uh, to use investment terminology here you want to see the return on investment the return on your quest for friendships for better friendships so while developing and maintaining friendships you want to think about the the benefits here and here are here they are friendships improve your mood they help you reach your goals you can use friendships to help reduce your stress and depression Friendships, good friendships, that is, support you through tough times. They support you as you age. Remember, as you age, things like retirement, illness, and the death of loved ones can often leave you isolated. So knowing there are people you can turn to for company and support can provide purpose as you age and serve as a buffer against things like depression, loss, hardship, and disability. Friendship can also help you boost your self-worth. This is a two-way street though, so the give side of the give and take contributes to your own sense of self-worth. Being there for your friends makes you feel needed and adds purpose to your life. It, it is also important to understand that friendships can also boost your financial worth. We spent a lot of uh, time covering the, the issue of uh, the topic of uh, professional networking or life networking in general. and. Uh, 
seen its implication on financial worth. So you might want to double check our shows on uh, wealth management and um, and professional networking to see you know, our views on that topic. One thing that is very important is that nowadays everybody has friends on the Internet. Everybody has friends, quote unquote, friends on Facebook, on YouTube, on um, they have followers on Instagram. They feel part of a family. But it, are those real friendships? That's a great that's a great question to ask. Online friends are not enough. Of course, yes, technology has shifted the definition of friendships, friendship in recent years. So with a click of a button, you can add a friend or make a new connection. But having thousands of online friends is not the same thing as having a close friend you can spend time with in person. Online friends cannot hug you when a crisis hits. They cannot visit you when you're sick. They cannot celebrate a happy occasion with you. While the most our, our most important and powerful connections as humans happen when you we are face to face so you want to make it a priority to stay in touch with the real people that matter to you in the real world not just on the internet finding a friend is kind of important so know what to look for in a friend so a friend is someone you trust and with whom you can share a deep level of of understanding and communication so how what does a good friend look like a good friend will always show an honest interest in what's going on in your life what you have to say and how you think and feel a good friend will will accept you for who you are very important folks they don't judge you a good friend will listen to you at carefully without judging you telling you how to think or feel or trying to change the subject a good friend will feel comfortable sharing things about themselves with you. So when you have uh, someone that you that you talk to and you kind of feel like this is only a one way and uh, he or she is not communicating or sharing stuff about themselves to you, that's not really a good friend. So as friendships works both ways, a friend is also someone you feel comfortable supporting and accepting and someone with whom you share a bond or of trust and loyalty. You want to focus on, on the way a friendship feels, not what it looks like. What I'm trying to say here is that you, you know, like, you know, when you have someone that you haven't spoken to, or I think everybody has this person in their life that you don't talk to them often. But once you talk, you probably talk to them once a year or once every six months. But once you talk to them, you kind of feel like, oh, wow, you reconnect right away. In other words, the their physical presence is not needed. It's it's more the emotional one. The, the emotional foundation of the friendship is so strong you don't need to see them or talk to them on a daily basis or weekly basis to feel the bond, right? Do you, do you see what I'm talking about? This is exactly what the kind of stuff you have to think about when thinking about a friendship. You want to focus on the way the friendship feels, not what it looks like. The most important quality in a friendship is the way you feel, is the way the relationship makes you feel. Not how it looks on paper, how alike you seem on the surface, or what others think. You got to ask yourself a few things. Do I feel better after spending time with this person? Am I myself around this person? Do I feel secure or do I feel like I have to watch what I have to what I say or and do? Is this the person I can trust? Is this person supportive and am I treated with respect? So the bottom line is if the friendship feels good, it is good. Simple as that. But if a person tries to control you, criticizes you, abuses you, whether mentally or physically or abuses your generosity or brings unwanted drama or negative influences into your life, it's really time, folks, to reevaluate that friendship because a good friend does not require you to compromise your values, always agrees with them, or disregard your own needs. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of uh, Sweetie Q. We are having a, a wonderful conversation around the the marvelous topic of friendship and how to make good friends, uh, great lifelong friends. Let me give you a few tips to, to for being more friendly and social, even if you're shy. Even if we, we actually have covered also the topic of uh, um, how introvert people, how introverts can network professionally, socially, how they can actually get ahead in life. And uh, so if you are, you, you can double check that those videos, uh, those videos as well. One thing to keep in mind is if you are introvert or shy, it can feel uncomfortable to put yourself out there socially. 
but you don't have to just be natural you you don't have to go out to happy hours to make friends there are ways there are little other ways to make uh, friends naturally and smoothly focus on yourself focus on uh, what you feel like focus on what's really important for you and once you understand what's important for you focus now on others so the key to connecting to other people is by showing interest in them so when you're truly interested in someone else's thoughts feelings experiences and opinions it show this will show and they will like you for it pay attention when you're talking with someone please switch off that smartphone avoid other distractions and make an effort to truly listen to the other person one thing you have to you have to also do is that you have to think about the fact that if you're paying close attention to what someone is saying doing or how they are interacting you will quickly get to know the person small efforts go a long way such as remembering someone's preferences the stories they've told you and what's going on in their life so you have to really pay attention to them now it's also really important to understand that you can turn you can turn acquaintances into friends everybody got acquaintances acquaintances is someone that you actually meet and when you meet them you just say hi good morning how are you or you have small talk small talk like very general broad subjects and people and those people you can turn them into friends we all have acquaintances so people that we exchange small talk with as we go about our day or trade jokes or insight with online now while those relationships can fulfill you in their own right what if you wanted to turn a casual acquaintance into a true friend remember though that friendship all kinds of friendships are characterized by intimacy so true friends know about each other's values struggles goals and interests so if you like to transition from acquaintance acquaintance to friend you want to open up to the other person you don't have to reveal your most closely held secrets you don't have to start telling them how you feel and what happens in your life 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 10 years ago you want to start small by sharing something a little more a bit a little bit more personal than you would normally do and see how the other person responds you got to really give this you got to give this sort of you got to open up the door to friendship in small doses if the person seems interested if the person reciprocates by disclosing something about themselves then you know you can go ahead and keep the the ball rolling if not it's time to stop the conversation and go back to your shell quote unquote it's also important to when you are when you want to have a self-disclosure when you're trying to open up to other people especially acquaintances you need to evaluate interest not just when it comes to acquaintances but also in friends in general you need to evaluate interest as i've said before friendship is a two-way street it takes two it takes two to tango it takes two to tango in a friendship so it is important to evaluate whether the other person is also looking for new friends you know sometimes you go uh, i'm just going to give you like a quick metaphor on the internet when you set up when you send a friend request to someone you don't know or who doesn't know you right that's kind of weird sometimes when i when i receive friend requests on facebook or on linkedin and you don't know you don't have you have never interacted with a person you don't have no common friends and out of the blue someone sends you a friend re- how do you react really it's the same thing we're talking about here you are sending a friend request to someone and you don't know if the other person is looking for for, for new friends so when you are trying to find your offline your real life friends you need to evaluate interest do they ask you questions about you as if they like to get to know you better do they tell you things about themselves beyond surface small talk do they give you their full attention when you see them does the other person seem interested in exchanging contact information or making specific plans to get together those four questions and there are many more but those four questions if you cannot answer yes to any of these questions the person may not be the best candidate for a f- friendship right now even if they honestly like you there are many possible reasons why not so do not take this personally people go through stuff someone who is not ready for friendship today maybe 
ready within six months, six months from now or a year from now. Never take things personally. You just want to continue your journey and the right person will walk into your life. The right friend will walk into your life at the right time. It's all about timing, right? Sometimes it's kind of funny how you find something, a friendship, a person, an object where you're not really looking for that for, for that thing or that person, right? This is this this sounds familiar, right? You are just uh, walking around and you just meet an old friend and that you even have forgotten about. It's because the time is right. It's because, and this is something that I believe that the universe has decided that you guys should meet at that particular moment. So the thing, the same thing goes. The same process applies for friendships. Talking about friendships, how do you meet new people? There are several ways to 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 meet new people the where do you really start so we tend to we tend to make friends with people we cross paths with regularly and that's pretty cool people we go to school with work with or live close to the more we see someone the more likely a friendship is to develop so you want to look at the places you frequent as you start your search for potential friends now when it comes to friendship you also got to look at something very critical you want to have common interests so we tend to be drawn as humans to people who are similar with a shared hobby, cultural background, career path, or kids the same age. So you want to think about activities you enjoy or the causes you care about. When, you, when you're ready to meet people, when you're ready to make new friends, I want you to start looking at in these places, in these sort of situations, volunteering. Volunteering can be a great way to help others while also meeting new friends. And volunteering also gives you the opportunity to regularly practice and develop your social skills, your emotional skills. That's a wonderful. I'm not even talking about the karma, the karmic advantage, the karmic benefits of volunteering. It's just great. It boosts your karma. It boosts your, 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 your positive vibes. It's just wonderful. You can take a class or join it. You can meet new people by taking a class or joining a club. You can walk a dog. Dog owners often stop and chat while their dogs sniff or play with each other. So if dog ownership isn't right for you, you can volunteer to walk dogs from a shelter or a local rescue group. Attend art galleries opening. You can attend art gallery openings, book readings, lectures, musical recitals, or other community events where you can meet people with similar interests. So you can check with your local, your local library or a local paper for events near you. One way to also make new friends is to behave like someone new to the area. Even if you've lived in the same place all your life, you want to take time to re-explore your neighborhood attractions. So new arrivals to any town or city tend to visit these places first so and they are often keen to meet new people and establish friendships too. Cheer on your team. If you want to go to a bar alone, that's not really the good. The good I mean, happy hours is one great example. You can support a sports team, for example, on, on, game, on, on game nights. You can find out where, where other fans go to watch the games and you automatically have a shared interest, your team, which makes it natural to start up a conversation. To make new friends, you can also unplug. Remember though, you cannot meet new people in any social situation if you're more interested in your phone than the people around you. So you want to remove your headphones and put your smartphone away while you are in the checkout line or waiting for a bus for example making eye contact and exchanging small talk with strangers is great practice for making connections and you never know where this may lead i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie kiwi we're also having a conversation around um making friends and how to actually do the whole thing properly and I want to talk to you today about, um, I want to give you a few tips for strengthening acquaintances, how to strengthen acquaintances. There are several ways to do this. Now, you can invite a neighbor or work colleague out for a drink or to a movie. You can track down old friends via social media sites, and you can make an effort to reconnect and turn your online friends into real world friends by meeting up, by meeting up the coffee for coffee instead of chatting on Facebook or Twitter. Carpool for work. That's fantastic. You can carpool to work. And uh, and a lot of companies nowadays offer carpool programs. It's great for the, for the economy. It's great for the environment. And it's great for the company's bottom line. So 
even if your employer doesn't. Simply ask your colleagues if they would like to share rights. It's a great conversation starter and will help you connect with people who live near you. You can also find ways to um, to meet people on the internet and trains and uh, transform those internet co connections into real life connections. Overcoming obstacles to making friends. So if you're too busy, now if you're too busy, developing and maintaining friendships, folks, takes time and effort. But even with the pack schedule, you can find ways to make the time for friends. How do you do this? Put it on, on your calendar. Schedule time for your friends just as you would for errands, for example. That's fantastic. That will be very wonderful. Mix business and pleasure. So you want to figure out a way to combine your socializing with uh, activities you have uh, to do anyway. So this could include going to the gym, for example, shopping or getting a pedicure. So errands create an opportunity to spend time together while being uh, while still being productive. You can also group things. So if you truly don't have time for multiple one-on-one -on -one sessions with friends, you can set up a group get together like girls night or guys nights. This is a great way to introduce your friends to each other. So of course you need to consider if everyone is compatible first, right? <laughs> That's one thing you have to pay attention to. Now, if you're afraid of uh, rejection, what do you do? So making, making new friends means putting yourself out there and that can be scary. So if it's especially intimidating, if you are someone who has been betrayed, traumatized or abused in the past or someone with uh, an unsecure attachment bond. But by working with the right therapist, you can explore ways to build trust in existing and future relationships. So nobody likes to be rejected, folks, but there are healthy ways to handle it. So just because someone is not interested in talking or hanging out doesn't automatically mean they are rejecting you as a person. They may just they may be busy, distracted or have other things going on. Don't take it personal. Again, the key word here, the key phrase here is don't take it personal. If someone does reject you, that doesn't mean that you are worthless or unlovable. Maybe they're having a bad day. They're going through stuff. Maybe they misread you or misinterpreted what you said. Or maybe they're just not a nice person. That happens too. That exists. We have those kind of people around. You're not going to like everyone you meet and vice versa. So remember that like dating, building a solid network of friends can be a numbers game. So if you're in the habit of regularly exchanging a few words with strangers you meet, rejections are less likely to hurt. There's always the next person. So you want to focus on the long term goal here of making quality connections. That's the keywords again. Another keywords, quality connections rather than getting up, getting hung up on the ones that didn't pan out. Keep rejections in perspective. It never feels good, but it's rarely as bad as you imagine. It's unlikely that others are sitting around talking about it, talking about it. Instead of beating yourself up, give yourself credit for trying. That's the keyword again, trying and see what you can learn from the experience. I also want to talk to you about the fact that you need to be you need to focus on yourself first. If you want to have a great friendship, if you want to make great friends, you need to be a, a great friend to yourself. Self love is very important. Making a new friend is just the beginning of the journey. Friendships take time to form and even more time to deepen. So you need to nurture that new connection. You need to be a better friend to yourself and be a better friend yourself. There are two dimensions here. The duality is, is very important because um, when, it, when everybody talks about great friendships, you actually have a four dimensions. So two dimensions on each side of the friendship. The, each friend loves himself or herself first and is a better friend to the other person. So be the friend that you would like to have. You want to treat your friends just as you would want them to treat you. So you want to be reliable, trustworthy, and willing to share yourself and your time. Be a good listener. Be prepared to listen to and support friends just as you would want them to listen to and support you. Always try to practice what I call emotional distance. You want to give your friends space. Don't be, don't be needy or clingy all the time. Everyone needs space to be alone or spend time with other people as well. Don't set too many rules and expectations. Don't make the whole thing mechanical or methodical. We're not here. This is not a business conversation. This is not a business partnership. You're not having 
a friendship agreement as you would see in business where they have a partnership operating agreement no this is a relationship this is a human relationship and you're just trying to keep keep things informal as informal as possible allow your friendship to evolve naturally so you're both unique individuals so your friendship probably will not develop exactly as you expect and another way to be a better friend yourself and contribute to a healthy relationship is to be forgiven never hold grudges never no one is perfect and every friend will make mistakes no friendship develops smoothly so there is a bump if there is a bump in the road try to find a way to overcome the problem and move on it will often deepen the bond between you what i'm trying to say here is that don't expect your, your friend to be uh, to be perfect don't expect the whole relationship the whole journey to be uh a smooth ride things will happen you will have a bumpy moments you will have uh, moments where you you kind of feel like well, you know what i'm out of here i'm not even uh, spending any extra minute with you but this is when you really know whether or not this is a friend for life this is the best friend for, for life uh, you'll be your bff B, bff i think that's what that's how they call them <laughs> so my point here is that it is in the hardest of moments through the vicissitudes of life that you realize whether or not you are meant to be someone's friend and he or she is also meant to be your friend so be forgiven don't set rules give your friend space listen effectively be a great listener be the friend that you would like to have and you i'm definitely sure you will find the best friend in your life thank you so much for listening to this conversation i really appreciate it i will see you next time i wish you all the best of luck in uh, finding a friendship and creating a great friendship for life i'll see you next time and until then remember stay marvelous